Danny Mackey, head coach of the Brooks Beasts, and I'm here with the 2023 world champion in the men's 1500, Josh Kerr, and we're going to talk about the race for the first time. I mean, yeah, I'm interested to see your your side of things because obviously I'm out there battling, but you're kind of the the man behind behind the scenes doing all the like getting the training in the right way, making sure I'm I'm peaking at the right time. And one of the things that was interesting about this year was we had two days between the semi-final and final. How were those 48 hours? Having the two days off was different. And so, because I felt so good in the rounds, it was just continued confidence. But I think I had to make sure that I held on to the feelings after the semi-final, how good I felt then. And then bring that, keep in that same energy, but almost just bottling it up just for the race days. Mentally, it's very draining being there for so long. Yeah, one of the things we didn't talk about, did you feel better? Like, did you feel physically? different between round one, semi, and final? Physically, not really. But what I think some of the things we changed in the warm-up, nutrition-wise, and um, stuff that we, pra we had practiced in Albuquerque before we went out, uh, in terms of you know sitting in the call room for a little bit, being there early and getting like gels through the uh, warm-up, I think that made a big difference with energy levels for the world champs, because I hadn't done that before. So it was a bit of a risk to do it right. first time there. Uh, but that made a big difference. But I think the first round is, was pretty, the first two rounds were pretty easy on the body because we were running like 335, 334. And you know, when you're in shape to run 327, 328, like those are pretty simple rounds. Yeah, because we, we put you into recovery mode like right away yeah. and then started to ramp up like on the back end of that day one mm -hmm. from a nervous system standpoint. Yeah. But it was tricky because we just hadn't dealt with that yet. And you got to feel better in the final than the yeah you know. I think that was an interesting difference where almost the coaching came in more important than it has in any other year watching the rounds especially the rounds and the way that I raced them which I feel like I raced the rounds the best I've ever raced them mm -hmm. but like how was how was the emotional roller coaster of like the rounds especially yeah the stress of it is like there's so many things outside of your control that is happening my stress is like if somebody trip you if you get really boxed in and we're in a really bad spot because everybody's just good enough where they could kind of keep you out. Yeah. Like those are the things that, that stress me out quite a bit. So <laughs> I can ask you, <laughs> is there a point in the race where you had to adjust strategy? It's probably when you're in 11th place. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what everybody else was thinking, but I was like, this is it's fine. You know what's plan F. <laughs> yeah. I think the funniest part was in my head, plan A was our, you know, stay in the top five or top four even, um, and stay on the rail as long as possible. Well, there was all, all these different plans, but plan F was definitely like, just feel like the first 400 and not waste energy in that first, in the, in that first 400, slash like throw all the plans out the window and just race how I feel. And it just felt too quick off the rip. And I knew it was gonna be fast in that first 400. And I'd, I'd written pages and pages of notes of like how I felt like I was gonna run and where the best places to move were. And so I was like, I need to move up, but I need to move up at the time where no one else wants to move up. And so that was always gonna be 500 to 600 down that home stretch with two laps to go. And so I knew that at that point I would have the positioning I wanted to at 400, but it was just gonna be about seven or 800 meters in. And I think just not being scared of being out in lane two was also something, even though like it was, it's probably pretty stupid to be out early lane two, but because that second lap was so slow, it made, made life a lot easier for me. So I don't know, I, I felt like I was in a state where everything was just, my decision making process was super smooth and super quick. And that's when, yeah, the first hundred, I just, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna commit to being back here for a little bit. Cause it wasn't, it was out in like 56 low and then we ran 58. So it wasn't like I was needing to waste energy. Right. Um, but yeah, the plan, the plan never really goes, mm -hmm. never goes as it's supposed to. Other than when you're time trialing sometimes, but in a World Champs or Olympic final, it just goes out straight out of the window. Well, I think one of the things that we do well is we break stuff down into bite-sized pieces mm -hmm. where it's, it's, the Olympics are gonna happen regardless of we're there or not. I think one of the challenges that we tend to do well uh, when we're up against it is like not making them bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but like I don't feel any pressure from a coaching standpoint to like repeat. It's like, this is, this is a very important race. Yeah. It's different than world championships. Um, I think that there's elements of like a legacy that yeah. are, I think, good motivators. 
because it's one thing to win a title, it's one thing to win a medal. So from a coaching perspective, obviously you'd seen the training, we were in such a good spot, I think, in terms of how the body was feeling, how healthy I was, I was you know, overall just general health, um, as well as just how, how the body was responding to training and things. And I do think it's one of those things where we've done it, we have this, almost like this outline of how to be in amazing shape on one day, and we've done that multiple times now. Then we have al already have a skeleton plan of like what has worked, and so it almost just gives us this really interesting plan for you know the next couple of years. Obviously, I've got the buy into the 2025 World Championships, and obviously trying to make the Olympic team next year, and lots of fun things on the horizon. We are working extremely hard. We're doing it the right way. We're doing it the clean way. I've just been thinking about. Paris like more intently like it's a different animal and but I think it's but I think it's stripping that stuff away and getting back to like well, why am I doing this because once I know why I'm doing it then the motivation is very real and the discipline is easier to, to, to find so I don't have like an exact plan but those are like my like th general thoughts leading into Paris what I'm excited about um, and then just and then it's being simple is like just staying healthy yeah. and, and I, that's going to be hard enough yeah. to figure it out. It's taken so many years to get to this exact point where I want it to be. And so defending that top of the mountain is going to be incredibly hard. And I, I don't take that for granted. I know how difficult it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I got into the sport to, to be the best in the world. And I'm, I've, I've, I've already showed that I can do that. And so being at the top as long as possible is my, my next goal.